Bully? Bully? Bully, what are you... How? 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 What? How? Ben? What? Dad? Ben, you're in the dumpster. Dad! What are you What are you doing in the dumpster? What? Do you recognize that's this? One thing, ben, to Do be you a, recognize this? That's bully. That's it's bully. One thing to be yeah, unemployed. that's bully. Oh, what you're geez. doing in the? Yeah. You, oh, did, did I? Uh, I didn't throw it out. You know what? I had Grace was in here last week, and and I told her whatever's in that linen closet, we never use it. Grace knows bully. Just toss it. Grace knows bully. Well, I I told her that that whatever she. You told did, her to throw out bully. I never said the word bully. I said the linen closet is 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 uh, unusable I, because it's so packed full of junk. Uh, how could you? I mean, you know, bully is my favorite stuffed animal. It has been since I was two. How do you let this happen? Well, let how me you... ask you something, Ben. When was the last time you spent any time with bully? If it's your favorite stuffed animal. Oh, that's none of your business. How much time I spend with bully? Okay, Ben. I don't have time to discuss this now. Clean yourself off. Well, I'm just. You better think twice next time about about this, Dad, because this. This isn't good. You know, this I, isn't I, good. I've got to tell you, I'm a little embarrassed sitting here talking to a guy in the dumpster. Can we continue this conversation later? Well, I guess I just expect an apology, Dad, because, you know, it just shows, a, I guess, a lack of consideration well, for my should stuff. I apologize for trying to create an, an environment in which two adults can live? Oh, what are you trying to say, that because I have a stuffed animal, I'm not an adult? I think you said it eloquently. No, all I'm saying is that, that, that we need the use of that closet, Ben. I have human friends, too. Well, do you keep them in the linen closet? Would you throw them out? Touche, so. my young son. Ray? Yeah. Now, you didn't go into this marriage thing blindly, you know. I sh somebody should have told me, son. Somebody should, you should live together first. That's what you should do. I didn't know what to, you know why the first day you move in, you realize I had no experience. I came from my parents' house. Right. The first day is crucial because you make the choices that don't seem important. Like what side of the bed do you want? Right. Oh, that seemed like it was trivial at the time, but that's my side for life now. I, I, I blew the call. I didn't look, I didn't look at the TV angle. No, you don't think about those things. You know what I did? I, I went with my childhood instinct. I took the side that was away from the door in case the boogeyman comes in. I factored that in. Uh, All right, the boogeyman will get her. I'll be, I'll be in my spaceship by then. Yeah, well, I found out all the roles that I was going to play right after I got married. You know, you think you know them all. You think, oh, it's take out the garbage and mow the lawn. Those are the traditional roles. Right after I got married, I found out that in the middle of the night, I was now the automatic noise checker outer. Every little thing. What was that? No, it's nothing. No, check it out. Check it out. What do you mean, nothing? Uh, that could be a burglar with a gun. So be careful. Go. Watch out. Put your slippers on. You might have to run. Bring me up a yogurt if it's nothing. Either way, I want a yogurt either way. Don't come back without a yogurt slipper, boy. Oh, so, so you're the, the noise, noise checker. Second place swim trophy. Third place swim trophy. Uh, my runner-up swim trophy. My other trophy. Hey Ben, what are, what are you? What's going on here? What are you doing? I'm putting labels on all my stuff, Dad. Why? Why are you doing that? Well, the red labels will inform you that you are not to touch or remove these objects from my room. And uh, ah, I get it. This is all about. That's right. And the yellow labels are that you can take them out of the room, but you can't remove them from the house. And the green labels mean you can take them out of the house, but you can't give yeah. them away. You have to bring okay. them back. I get the idea, Ben. Do you think right. this is necessary? Well, obviously it is because of what happened this morning. You don't think that this is something we can just talk about and then act like responsible adults? The beige labels, Dad, mean that... Where'd you get beige labels? I don't own these items. I'm borrowing them from somebody else. Therefore, if you take them out, then you have somebody else to deal with, not me. Because they're somebody else's. What is it you're, what, what is it you're saying here, Ben? You're well, just... maybe it's not just about bully, Dad. Yeah. Maybe, maybe by you throwing out bully, you're giving me a signal that uh, maybe I'm next. Maybe you throw me out. Maybe I... 
I leave. Ben, have I ever put any pressure on you to leave this house, to move out, to live the life of a young adult? Um, have I ever suggested that I could use this as my office and maybe a little, uh, like an upright piano? Have I ever in a, in a zillion years suggested to you that your presence in my life is anything but rewarding? So don't, don't go reading stuff into this. So, so you, you don't, you don't want me out. I don't want you out, Ben. I mean, at some point you will spread wings and fly. Right. You know, you will want to be out on your own someday and, and you'll know when that day is. I'm going to, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm going to fly. I'll fly it. You know I will. You put a, I noticed you put a red label on your labels. That what remind me what does that mean? Chase one night. He prayed for the moon to give him light. Okay. He many a mile. It's nice. Go that night before he reached the town. Oh, come on, Ben. Okay. Town. Of, come Dead. on, Benny. Dead. Dead. Oh. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dad, hold up here. Um, I'm a, Dad, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think I'm going to turn in. Okay? Ben, you used to love that song. What's, what's the matter? Well, I still, I still love it, Dad. I, it's, yeah. it's, a great, it's a great old song. I, I'm just a little tired, I guess, and uh, a little too much okay. excitement for one night. You know, first the chicken pot pie, now the, now the song. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You want to hear some, uh, some Snoopy Dog Dog, is that it? Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> no. Yes. Dad, <laughs> Ow. Yeah. I think I heard something. I don't even know contemporary music. I, I lost, lost track after the Buckinghams retired. <laughs> <laughs> Want to hear a little blues? No. It's bluesy, all right. Okay. Wow, this is exactly what I, uh, I didn't want to hear right now. Yeah. You sure uh, know what you're doing on that. You're picking. You're picking fine blues. You know, your mother and I used to, we used to listen to the blues all the time when we were in school. That's a great story, Dad. What the... Do a little dum bum 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 um... <laughs> hey, you know, Dad, as opposed, yeah. as opposed to playing uh, to me every night, you maybe you should, you're, you're good. Maybe you should go to, like, I know a couple places that have open mic nights. What's... You, you go, you you sign up and you and you play uh -huh. in front of an audience. And that well, way. I'm not I'm not in that league. These guys are guys who do nothing but play the guitar. And, you know, I, this for me is just a hobby. No, no, no. But what would I sing? Do so you need to sing original songs? Because I haven't written a song in 20 years. That's all folk. No, it's, uh, a, it's all folk music. It's all folk. It's all. Like, no, do you, you know, think I'm that good that I could get up there and and keep an audience captivated? No. On the edge of their seat. Um. I mean, I think you're capable enough uh, to, uh, to yeah, make an impression on uh, people. Ben, thank you for your support. Oh. Yeah. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Well, don't, don't. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Remember what you used to think it was called, Jimmy crack corn? Yes, uh, I do, yeah. When you were little? Yeah. Emmy ack corn. <laughs> Remember that? Emmy ack corn. Ben, where are you going? I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little uh, bloated. This next song, ladies and gentlemen, is about suffering. God knows that's something that we've all we've all done a little bit of, and I'm going to tell you about it tonight. I've been hurt so many times, folks. Four, four times. Guess what I paid for this sweater? No. Just take a guess. Just take a guess. A wild guess. I don't want to. Okay, five dollars. Five dollars? What's wrong with you? How could you even... First of all, did you look at what it's made of? It's made of lamb's wool, for God's sakes. Here, read this. Plus sizes unlimited. I'll smack you. So th think back to your childhood. Yeah. A little further. And how do you remember your mother? At the sink, rinsing things out constantly. Mm -hmm. She'd be at the sink saying things like, Dear God, give me the strength to wash these brassiers. Things like that. She was very depressed. But the only way you would cheer her up is you tell her you were going to awake. 
Oh, then she'd say, oh, yeah, who died? That would perk her up. Well, you know, I, I'm divorced. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't really want to get married again. Mm-hmm. I'm at the point where I want a man in my life, but not in my house. Right. I'm on the phone all day long. I don't really see what they could do all day long with me. My feeling is come in, attach the VCR, and get out. Jeez, that's, that's a pretty strong statement. Why all the anger at men? Where is that coming from? Well, I be- no, it's not that I, I like men, but I could get angry with them. Yes, indeed. Last year, I spent $850 on pantyhose. Men are still wearing the same socks they wore to junior high school. They call them their lucky socks. How do you know that? I'm sick of them. Folk music? Yeah, yeah. Like an open mic, like like anybody can go. Kind right, of. right, like he gets up and he, he, he gets to, uh, to play a song. Folk songs? Yeah, old folk songs. Folk songs that he wrote? Um, some originals, a couple covers. Really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I thought you'd like to uh, maybe come along, uh, you know, with me and listen to him. To be honest, that sounds so horribly painful and humiliating. I mean, for you and for him. Yeah, sort of. I'll go. Really? Yeah. Great. Sex, sex and marriage, it's a cliche, but you have to work at it. You have to uh, reinvent the, the sex. Someone actually told me to spice up the sex to go to try going to a motel. Sure, if that works, you know. You know, they get a babysitter, go to a motel. Or, right. You know, we tried that. And, and the weird thing is they give you the motel room for four hours. I don't know about you, Doc, but uh, who needs a room for four hours? Uh, well, some people they like to, you know, unpack and and uh, you know make I told the place like, their own. The, show me the twenty minute room. That's all. The twenty minute room has to have a TV and a wake up call. That's all. Do you have a drive through? Because I know what I want. Four hours. Who are these guys who need a room for four? hours? They think they do. That's the way it is. It's always that way with sex. You you're in the four hour mode when you start. You know, you're like, oh, this is gonna be a marathon. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear a number on my back, and people are gonna have to bring me cups of water. And it never ends up because it's always pacing. That's what it is. That's my problem. My pacing is off because I start in the four-hour pace, but something. You know what it is? You always go that one move too far, and then you, then you try to save it. No, don't move, honey. Freeze. Don't. He, oh, you moved. You moved! It's not my fault! Come on, you clearly exhaled! Don't look at me! <sighs> Where's the remote? So, um, hey, let me ask you a question. Um, mm-hmm. This is, uh, this is pretty good. We're, we're sitting uh, together at a table and, uh, we both ordered the same drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is kind of, uh, does this in any way resemble to you like a, a, a date? No. No? No. No. Uh, what would uh, make it more like a date to you? If you are a different guy, I guess. Huh. Uh. <clears throat> can you hear me, uh, can you hear me in the back? What's he talking about? There's nobody okay. back there. If you want to move up, uh, there's some seats up front, everybody. Well, first of all, thank you very much. And this uh, this first song is a song that I wrote. I'm a little nervous. You have to bear with me. I wrote it when I was 23 years old. And uh, discovering for the first time that loving someone was was no guarantee that they would love you back. It's called Loving Someone is No Guarantee That They Will Love You Back. And it goes like, uh, well, I, I was a, just to give you a little more background, I was a student living in a farmhouse uh, with, with five of my best friends. And my dog, Muzzy, Black Labrador. I think he's losing them. Yeah, I think he's losing me. 
Anyway, I wrote this song in 1970. I was a young man of 23, and uh, now, much to my amazement, I have a, I have a son that age. In fact, he's here tonight. Ben, why don't you stand up and no, no, right. and take a bow? No, I, that's fine. My son, ladies and gentlemen, Benjamin Daniel Katz. Thanks. Please let him know, folks. Thank you, Dad. Give it up one time for Benny. That's enough, Dad. I'm gonna sit back down now, Dad. Thanks. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Remember that song I used to sing for you when you were little? Uh, no. No, I don't. Let me refresh your memory. I, I actually wrote this song for you. A boy, a bike, a heart so full, a mom, and a dad, and a little stuffed bull. Oh God, what have I done? Ben? Dad. Will you forgive me, please? Yes. Yeah, right away. You're forgiven. Is you, there uh, some way I can make it up to you? Show's up there, folks. Show's on the stage. Hey, hey! Sorry, I uh, I left. I I had to. I I came out here to to pee for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had to get out. That was really painful. I mean, it was really was hard for me. Really painful. Yeah, that was particularly hard on me. I mean, mm -hmm. he was tense, but I. I but you I know sort what? of tensed up there too. It was like the good kind of pain, you know. Do you know what I mean by the good kind of pain? Like, no, like no. when you have a canker sore, like right on the inside of your cheek, and mm. you just keep chewing on it because it's, it's, it's like the good kind of pain. Yeah, you yeah, can't I stop. Can. It's sort of yeah. like a, like a turn on. Really? Yeah. Well, I could, I, I could chew on sores all night. I love them. I love sores. I, I chew on a big sore. How is your appetite? My appetite is too good. I just want to eat everything. And you, you're afraid if you eat too much, you, you'll put on weight? Is it your big... No, I'm afraid if I eat too much, I'll get thinner. What's wrong with you? Um... I mean, really, what kind of a doctor asks a stupid question like that? I feel hostile towards you now. That's okay. Just let it out. You know? I'm letting it out. Okay, well, let it out slowly. How does it feel to be bald? Do you want to hurt me? Is that is that what this is all about? Do you want to make me feel the kind of pain you're feeling? I find you repulsive. There's a hair, like you have nose hairs. I, I find that so repulsive to see nose hairs, you have no idea. Do you think I should wear them up? Are you sexually attracted to me at all? Oh, that's a tough one. I don't think that's an appropriate question. This is a therapist's office. I thought I was supposed to ask anything I felt like asking. You told me I could say anything I want. Now you're saying no? I'm not saying you can't ask me, but I, but I, I need to know why you, why you ask. I find you looking at me sometimes in a very leering manner. That's a, a, that's a defect. That's a palsy in my, in my, uh, I was in an accident and I leer now. I don't, I don't believe you. I think that you're a pervert, that you really are leering and ogling, you know, especially at my humongous breasts. I did, to tell you the truth, didn't even notice the, the, the size of them and the shape of them. Now I feel even worse. No, I'm saying I never really took in the fullness of your breasts. That's all the weight of them. Really? But Joy, in my role as a therapist, how I feel about you as a man is not really germane. Is there something disgusting and despicable and, and hideous about me that you haven't shared? I've shared it. Feels a little claustrophobic in your house now with the twins and the, and your daughter. I, this is horrible, but I actually make make little excuses now just to get out of my house. I'll do anything. Any, anybody need anything? Anything at all? Anything? Anything from the motor vehicle bureau? Maybe I'll do it. I'll. Can I register anything? I'm the guy. It's on my way. I was going that way. I'm just going out to apply for jury duty. That's all. Please let me out of the house. So you're saying it's hard to get any work done at home? My three-year-old runs the house. The hardest thing, you know, I can't even make a phone call. Every business call I try in my house, I screw up. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh, yeah, the 15th is fine with me. I just need to know where do you think you're going with that cookie? Put the cookie down. Not you. Sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. Oh, I didn't know you were eating a cookie. Of course I'm interested. Every time I'm there, I smell cocky. It's the cocky, Doc. Yeah. That's what it is. Sure. I have the twin towers of poop in my house right now. Whoops, you know what the music means. Our time is up. <laughs>